Did you think I was going to do it? It's Sunday night. Late on the West Coast. Even later on the East Coast. It's not time to be sad. It's time to feel good about our lives. We have another week coming. You know, weekends might be seen as little summers. And Mondays, a little back to schools. And things change over the summer. We can become different people. Understand new things about ourselves. Put into effect the things we've thought about changing for so long. Or some of you are just so hungover you slept all day and now your body clock's all off. And that's fun too. We can hang. So hi, everybody. I do not vape. I do not vape. Um, anytime anybody ever vapes, it's all kid smells. I want someone to make adult, manly vape smells. Like busted diesel exhaust. Ostrich leather. Alimony checks. What's up, everybody? Did you have a, a good weekend? Were the Emmys always on Monday? Or is this a new thing? I send many kisses to Brazil. Yeah, really throwing me off, these Emmys on Monday. Yeah, it's Perry. You're supposed to have the Emmys on Sunday night. And then Monday comes in, it's like, the award stuff is over. It hasn't even started yet. I wonder what that's done for LA parties on a Sunday night. I wouldn't know. I wasn't invited to any. Now, it could be that I was invited and the people that I, uh, people who received the invitation were like, John won't go to that. It still would have been nice to have seen. No. It's okay. Wouldn't have had anything to bring to the party. Like, literally wouldn't have had anything to bring to the party. Well, we're really tearing this conversation a new asshole, aren't we? What's going on with you? Emmys are on a Monday, so people have a week to party. Uh, it's not like 4th of July, where you're not sure where it's going to fall. You can put it wherever you want. But I just like the idea of like, oh, the Emmys fall on a Wednesday this year. As if they're like synced up with the sun. The Emmys fall on a Wednesday, which means we don't really know if we should party the Friday before the Emmys or the Friday after the Emmys. You know that Emmys traffic, you know, they're saying they predict up to 100 million travelers on Emmy Monday. So, you know, leave a lot of extra time. Leave a lot of extra time. Bro, why is my voice so deep? Well, I, I don't want to get into the anatomy of the pharynx or my height. And it wasn't long ago that I thought about how I have gotten in my head a bit about my voice, wishing it was higher. But if you think about it, when I think about it, I should say, my vocal range is actually quite wide. It just tops out a little low. But down here, I can sing down here all day. I can sing down here all day. I can sing down here all day. There's just not a really great demand commercially for people to sing that low. But if I wanted to sing down here, ooh, I could sing down here. Ooh, I could sing down here. It's about as low as I can go. But we live in a world where people respect the height of someone's pitch. We don't say, oh my God, did you see American Idol last night? The singer came on and when he hit that low note, people were crying. I wish they would because I would be a star. I would be a singing sensation. When he landed on that low note, whoa, yeah. Everyone getting up, like the cut of people standing up, you know. We'd make the rounds on the internet. The two hosts on the side of the stage would turn to the camera and go, he's doing it. He's nailing it. Whoa. People wiping tears away. You know. But, so this is my range, vocally, and this is where most people begin wanting to hear the note. 
this is where I wish I could sing. But God doesn't give anybody straight aces. And in fact, I want to tell you that if you think somebody doesn't have a flaw, it's just a flaw you can't see. Nobody in the history of the world ever got straight aces. You just don't get it. I did okay on the guitar side, fair enough on the singing side, but I'm not going to get both. God's not going to give me both. He's going to give me an, an, an astounding range of, of, a vocal, of as a vocalist, but he's going to he's going to put it all the way down. Whoa, 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 whoa! There's nothing I can do down there with that. As a useless depth. Yeah, what's up? You can ask me anything. You really should have put your question in the initial ask because you're going to get lost. Gary Clark Jr. does have both. Can't have it all. John Mayer doesn't get Botox. Botox gets John Mayer. I do not, I don't have Botox. And I'm friggin' very flattered that you are coming up with conspiracy theories to think that I have Botox. I have not had any Botox, but I can tell you how, well, I think genes have something to do with it. Um, I don't go, I didn't go in the sun for most of my life. I stayed in, stayed inside the house. I drank for a relatively short period of my life. Uh, I had my phone with it. Big Cream's fan. I mean, Big Cream fan. I'm a fan of the band Cream, and I'm a fan of the Cream called Cream. I have many different stuff, many different types of cream, and I have a couple of different, as you know, cream application, very untested, highly unscientific, but pretty resourceful cream application techniques. Namely, this evening I will tell you that I cycle my creams in and out. Who out there has three or four different creams, one or two different creams, and they cycle their creams? Who else cycles their creams? Who else believes that you have to have muscle confusion of the face as much as you have muscle confusion in CrossFit, things like that? Who else does it? Come on, tell me. Yep, cycle those creams. Yep, your skin shouldn't know what's coming. Who every once in a while looks in the mirror after they wash their face and go, you know what, tonight, nothing at all, and goes to bed with the skin doing this. Nothing at all? Well, I better use my natural sebaceous glands to step in for what I thought was going to be you putting cream on. I better use my natural defenses. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did. I did mention the sebaceous glands. I did mention the sebaceous glands. Misa Cream, you like what product specifically? I like Kiehl's. Thanks, Bob Saget. Uh, Bob... Keels is good, but I believe it's a little heavy. I mean, it's an unchanged recipe, more or less, so it uses a lot of sort of very heavy, possibly comedogenic things. Uh, you're very comedogenic, by the way, one of the funniest people I know. But, uh, mmm, dad, humor. Uh, Le Maire, number one. Now, Le Maire uses something called a miracle broth. Is this just blatant, silly, superficial advertising? The miracle broth? Well, I don't know. Because I used it, and people think I got Botox. I also use something called Natura Bisset. Very expensive. I can't, in good faith, recommend it to you. Because it's ridiculously expensive. I don't want any of you buying it. Yeah, man. Bob, I miss you. I miss you, and I need to see you soon. That's for that's from the heart. Do you sleep with your guitars, and how many do you own? Well, I own a lot of guitars. The number is offensive, so I wouldn't tell anybody. I don't know. Oh, I would never neglect my decolletage. For people, when you put your face creams on, you need to always go to the... Now, a women have a décolletage. This is what the décolletage is. For men, I would go to about here. Um, but yeah, uh, now I don't know where I was. Oh, guitars. 
yes, I have slept on my guitars. Now, a couple of times I've thrown my guitars in bed and then like jumped in and, and slept next to them. But most of the time it is a really sweet thing because it means I was playing guitar till I fell asleep. Now the Super Eagle that I play with Dead & Company is unlike any other guitar relationship because it goes with me everywhere because I need to sort of practice. It's not, it's not music that's native you know, for many years to me. So me and that guitar are like Thelma and Louise. Like two animals from Zootopia. I just never saw the movie, but I'm seeing Zootopia right now in my mind. You sleep with a ukulele. <laughs> Makes you feel larger. Yeah, but there have been times that I've put a, a guitar in bed with me. Just, look, uh, I'm nothing without that in some nights. And there have been nights I needed to remind myself that I was going to be okay because I had that. There's no doubt about it. I got no, I got no problem admitting that. See, here's what they won't tell you. Um, being, the only difference between being, having an unhealthy attachment and a healthy attachment to something is how people sort of view the effect that the thing has on you. I have what is technically an unhealthy attachment to guitar playing, but nobody sees it as unhealthy and it's easy to replicate. It's there when I want it. If somebody had an unhealthy relationship to gambling, but they kept winning, they wouldn't have a gambling problem. You only have a gambling problem if you lose. So I have a lot of my personal identity and value linked to the guitar. And there are some nights I need to go to that because I can't get it from the rest of the world. Is that healthy? Probably not geometrically in the way that it works. But it's been there for me. It's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. You know what they say, kiss your hands. It's an old wives' tale. Uh, favorite memory of Atlanta? Oh, I'm, I think of... I think of Mellow Mushroom. What was the other uh, pizza place started with an F? Italian name. You know, the date is starting to drop off the drive a little bit. Sorry. Well, someone put it. I remember Ponce de Leon Road. I remember. Uh, what was the name of that? Not Fibonacci's, but it's like something like that. Keep Me Where the Light is probably the most tattooed lyric of mine, which I'm very proud of. Keep me where the light is. Keep me where the light is. I remember everything about the day that I wrote Gravity. I remember everything about it. And it's not Fratelli's. Is it Fratelli's? I don't know. Are we a sim? Give us your sim thoughts. Sim thoughts are... Uh, it's lazy transcendent thinking. I'm, a, I'm not a big fan of like lazy transcending lately. Uh, Fellini's. Thank you, Fellini's. Remember Fellini's? I remember, uh, I remember going on tour. I remember, you know, leaving my house to go on tour. Um, you guys are already talking about Albert Collins. I ain't drunk, I just been drinking. Albert Collins had a song that Jimi Hendrix sort of aped for a song called Driving South. And what was the Albert Collins song called? What's the Albert Collins song called? Does anybody know? What was that song called? You know, if you want to hear like really great guitar playing, uh, rest up, Bob. I love you very much. Sleep well. You want to hear some really good guitar playing? Um, do I have Spotify? I don't even know if I have Spotify. Can I go to YouTube? Uh, you guys ever heard of Clarence Gatemouth Brown? Look, here's the deal. There's too many names in any generation for history to save them all. Clarence Gatemouth Brown. 
was a bad motherfucker. I mean, he was bad. I do not understand how Clarence Gatemouth Brown gets dropped off of the conversation, but it happens. It's like, you've got to make it through every year with all this big bucket of names, and some names fall out of the bucket. What it was like playing with Leon Bridges? Leon is great. Leon is fantastic. Leon's record. Leon is a man out of his own time. He's made one of the best records of any year. God bless him for making a fearless record that's high quality and great and no tricks and just great. And he's got his head down and he's playing gigs and he's not looking left or right to figure out what he could do to ingratiate himself into the ever-changing world of hyper-pop, perhaps like your boy does. He is living in his own time and space as any great artist should, and he's an inspiration to me. You gotta listen to that friggin' Leon Bridges record. It's great. So I want you to hear Gatemouth Brown and Okie Dokie Stomp. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's a commercial. Just to, it's a YouTube commercial. It says of stunning city, city skylines. It looks like it's for Shutterstock. Make the project soar, guys. It says find your footage at Shutterstock. It says skip ad, but I, I, I want to let it run. I want to hear it out. <laughs> Now there's an okie dokie stomp that he plays on the beat live 1966. Backer. No pick. None needed. None needed. Come on. Come on. Sharp as a tack. That's incredible timing. That's spicy. That's how I would describe it. Just jumping. He's playing like the drummer's playing. Oof. 
Well, actually, there's like a lot of great guitar playing stuff. Like Sunday nights for me, if I'm not on Instagram Live, I'm watching guitar players on YouTube. Like, oh, well, thank you. I don't know. I can hear, it's funny, like when I was younger, I thought I was, uh, thought my shit didn't stink. And then as I got better a musician, my ear went much faster than my playing, and I know everything that's wrong with my playing. Like, it's a little hellish. So if I'm, if I'm giving myself a compliment, it's not that I'm a good guitar player. It's that I'm a much better musician than I am a player, and I beat myself. Like, I don't beat myself up, but I literally beat myself to the finish line mentally as I'm playing, going like, that ain't it. That ain't it. So it's like I never really get a moment. I mean, I do sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, you're hitting it. Keep going. Keep talking. Keep talking. But the older I get, perhaps because I get better, uh, this is going to be a risky one to finish, uh, I'm more aware of how I'm not like I thought I was. And you're just trying to get your playing to catch up with the vision of your playing. And so the vision of my playing is far better than my playing. And I can, like... I'll watch videos back of myself playing and be like, what did you think another distortion pedal was going to do for your tone? Like, you put three on. It's, a, it's, like, a, it's like a friggin' wood saw sounding. And I'd be like, what did you think? Or what did you think you were going to do just, like, play stock BB King riffs over that song and people are going to care? Or, like, so you said that already. You said that already. That's my biggest problem as a guitar player. It's, like, yelling at myself. You said that already. Say it slower. Chill it out, chill it out, bring it back. Like, if every guitar player could get a tattoo right here that said, go slower, the world would be a better place. Um, oh, Hassel, I thought you spelled it Hassel Atkins. I thought you were like, hail Atkins, like all hail Chet Atkins. If you could tell yourself, if 2006 self something, what would you say? Uh, they don't care as much as you think they care. That would have saved me quite a bit. Um... I read this thing last night about aging, and it was like, when you're younger, you, you, you think people don't, you, you, you worry about who likes you and who doesn't, and when you get older, you realize they don't care. And it's true. Um, yeah, I wish I would have told myself, like, dude, it, it's not like everyone you walk into has, a, has an opinion on you. Most people are going on about their lives. And I think if I knew that, I wouldn't have sort of flipped my lid the way that I did thinking that everyone in the world... You know, to be really honest with you, there's two levels to hate in the sort of social media level of hate. There's the fact that it makes you feel bad, and I get that. But the real damage that it does is it sends you into the inner one-person politics of hate. And that means like... I see artists spending so much of their expression time expressing thoughts on combating not being liked or combating reading something they didn't like. So the negativity has two effects. The first effect is the initial effect which makes you feel bad. The second effect is that it turns you into an obsessed day trader of who hates you or who doesn't hate you. And it, turn, it I, I read people's wrestling with this stuff all day. And I think to myself, as I do in a lot of situations, I'm not sure this is the best use of your time on earth, my friend. That's what I want to say to these people. I'm not sure if your constant negotiation between love and hate on this superficial a level, this mass a level is a quality use of your lifetime. So it creates obsessive thinking about people who hate you and don't hate you. And, the, and what I learned is nobody hates you. And perhaps that's a little scary if you learn that nobody really hates you. They turn off their phone and they go back to it and they don't, they're not thinking about it. But there's the two-headed monster of yeah, it hurts your feelings, and it creates an inner culture of navigating hate, which is not interesting. I'm going to be honest. It's ultimately not interesting to anybody else. So I just look at people, and I go, I just wonder if this is a useful experience 
on, with your time on earth. And I'm not sure that it is. Nobody hates John Mayer. They either like me or they don't care. That's the bottom line. Someone wrote, who hates John Mayer? I didn't, didn't just go into that part of the conversation. Nobody hates you. They either like you or they don't care. Let's work backwards also. Nobody who uses a GIF in their negative tweet about you hates you because hate would not allow you to go looking for a sassy GIF. So if your negative tweet, as we read in the press, contains a sassy GIF, it's not truly negative. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that there's no way that true negativity can be conducted with the electrical current as low as social media. So, what does that mean? It means someone in what equates overall to an online game doesn't like you. That's like someone in some other Call of Duty room calling you a bad name. That means in that one multiplayer board in that world I'm being called a name. I'm greatly simplifying it, but I'm doing that to make the point. Anyway, anyway, you're still here and I'm still here. Perhaps I'll use the battery on my phone as a timer, an egg timer of sorts on when. You love hearing yourself talk. Two ways to go with that, how dare you? or you're probably right. 4,826 other people don't seem to mind it. Why not talk? You know what that makes me say? Who told you that you talk too much? Because that's a hand-me-down. That's a hand-me-down, my friend. You looking at someone talking expressively and saying, you like hearing yourself talk somewhere? That's a hand-me-down. And my question to you is, who told you that you talk too much? And when did you stop talking so much? I think you should start talking more. Personally. Now you want to listen to some more blues music? It's not a burn. It's just a... Which of Max guitars do you play on Small World? He had this black Les Paul that I picked up. I didn't have any guitar with me. And uh, he'd just written it that day. It was, for, I mean, maybe the only thing he ever played me. Because he had just been working on it. I went, woo! And I got to play this really groovy, almost a bass line on the guitar. Ba boom, boom. Ba boom, go. Ba boom, go. Da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na. It's like you kick the very, very beginning. Bounda, 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 donda, donda. Good question, do I own Les Pauls? I believe I own three Les Pauls. Um, but they don't, they don't come out uh, very often. Do I sometimes look up covers of my songs on YouTube? I don't. And I don't, uh, want to despirit anybody, but I am, it's almost impossible for me to watch somebody cover my song. And I'll tell you why. And this, this extends also to like anybody doing it on a, like a TV show, like a competition show. It makes me really uncomfortable. Not for them, because I dig what they're doing. But when I hear my song sung by someone else, I feel like it's exposing the fact that it's not that good a song for someone else to sing. Does that make any sense? I feel like I sing it because I had to write it because I can't sing super high or I can't sing the same sort of power that other people sing with. So when I hear someone else sing my song, it exposes to me like the embarrassment of my song. It only really makes sense if I sing it because I had to write it around. Like, I don't believe that Waiting on the World to Change is a great vocal line. I don't think like someone could go up on stage and sing it and get a prize for it. I don't think that people can go on and get, to sing a lot of my songs and get a prize for it. I had to write it for me. So when I hear other people do it, it reminds me of the old 
Rodney Dangerfield joke, walking in on his wife, having sex with his friend. And he says to his friend, whatever his friend's name is, you know, make it up like, Bruce, I have to, but you? It's a funny joke. Delivered with utmost non-precision. But um, I think to myself, well, I have to, but you? You don't have to. Um, so why would I cover? Oh, same reason. I just want to feel like someone else for a minute. I want to pretend it's mine. Um, I should do the karaoke car, carpool. I should do the karaoke. Well, I didn't butcher the I mean, I got the joke across. I wasn't doing it on stage. Hi, Michelle Thomas. The you I miss does not exist. Yeah, it'll probably be on an upcoming song. I should be honored when people cover me. I should be. There's nothing wrong with that statement. I should be honored. I should get over myself and be honored. I haven't yet. But that is a that's a that's a good point. I should be honored. And I am, in a certain way. But I deal with the visceral feeling of like having my own song shown to me. Or, and it's a little bit like a hyper personal thing. Like, ah, someone who only cover your songs, dick. Well, <clears throat> let's see how fast it takes for people to reduce what I'm saying to John hates it when other people play a song. What, 15, 20 minutes? Sorry. I uh, get uncomfortable. They're highly personal things I get uncomfortable. I don't know if anyone's ever said that. I'm sure there's been another singer who said that, you know? That said, I see it all the time on Instagram. How are you still single? Oh, let me explain. Let me explain. Step outside of self. Somebody tells me that that's really good advice from someone that I don't know and can't totally apply right now. I'm drinking sparkling water. Now, now, someone said they have a tattoo of me. I love when people. I mean, I don't. I don't go. That's weird. I think that's great when someone has a tattoo of me. That because I have a tattoo of Stevie Ray Vaughan on my arm, and so I know how much it takes something to matter to get it on your arm so, or you're in, anywhere else in your body. So. Liam Payne, what is up? Liam Payne, what is up? Everybody say hello to Liam Payne. I was going to say what band he was from before and I realized that's fucking unnecessary because he's Liam Payne. Um, he's his own man, standalone being. It didn't freeze, I just was still not drinking alcohol, still not drinking alcohol. I'm good. I love when people ask me, still not drinking alcohol, like, like, uh -huh, you, you're pulling it off still, huh? It's like, yes, I'm still somehow finding a way to pull it off and making you upset, <laughs> making you upset that you haven't started yet. <coughs> to each their own. Do I remember my own song, Laugh Lines? Of course I did. I mean, of course I do. I don't remember how it goes right now. Oh, yeah. Saw you sleeping on the couch tonight. No, it serves you right. Makes you luckier than I. And all the colors on the wall are changed. See, that's gone. It's gone. We're pushing on. We're passing through. And it won't be long till I walk with you. But tonight I'm down. I'm inside. I stared at the pictures in the album you forgot about. Man, I'm a nostalgic being. I'm a nostalgic person. Anyone else out there nostalgic? Anyone else out there painfully nostalgic? Anyone else out there live completely for the past while they waste the, the, the present moment and when they get to the future, the present moment becomes a past that they long for? Who else? Who else understands the power of then? Who understands the power of then? You think you'd finally figure it out that all these moments you want back were once present moments. No, you'll never figure that out. You want back what you already had. Did you like it when you had it? Not at all. Well, why don't you start liking what you have now? Because I want what I had then. The quote, space balls. <laughs> when will then be now? I don't know if that works. That's all I ever do. I'm ahead of myself. You know what I do when I, the rare times I make plans to go on a trip? I obsess about what the trip is going to be like. I have all my fun. 
Now, this actually is the opposite. This is me looking forward. This is how I ruin future events as well. See, Liam, I, I had no doubt you were more busy than I was. I go on every trip twice, and I like it better the first time. And the first time is in my mind. By the time I get to the trip that I've been waiting to go on, it's the second time. And it's not as good as the first time. And none of the chairs are arranged the way I like them. I had no idea. By the way, when you look forward to a trip you've never been on, your brain tells you what it's going to look like. And you, have, you never say to it, like, well, that's not true. We don't know what it looks like there. You just decide it looks like a place you've already been. And then when you get there, you say, well, this is nothing like the place I imagined. Well, no. Can you believe that, you dummy? It's not like that because you've never seen it. So I go, huh, what is this? What is this? And then things start not to be like the way you thought they were. And then next thing you know, you're falling short of your own dream and all you wanted to do was lay by a pool. You know what I call, you know what I call this? Chrononauts. You know, like astronaut, but instead of space, it's time. Chrononaut. And all we ever do is just go back. Oh, remember that, remember that. You know what I hate now? Throwback Thursday. I hate it. I don't like it. I don't like going back. Because it creates unnecessary sadness. It almost creates a synthetic kind of a love. It is in some way taking some oxytocin out of you and stepping on it. You know why? Because there's nobody there to receive it. Nobody. They're gone. Now, I'm not telling you to be here because I've figured it out, because I haven't. But I'm, I'm living. I made it through. I keep somehow making it work. So, anyway. <laughs> this is why Rudy is funny. Rudy writes, what's your battery at? I just stopped. I, we're, we're at 20%. I'm almost done with it. That's so funny. So funny. I'm not going to plug in my phone. I'm going to go till I go. I, we have 20%. Do I still like Family Guy? I like Family Guy the way everybody likes Family Guy. Like, is it still on? But yeah. That is true about Dreaming with a Broken Heart. And uh, I did see you there, Kat Dennings, a fan of yours. Don't know you personally. Saw you agree with me on the, uh, being, uh, the unhealthy attachment to the past. Ooh, man, I'm going to tell you something. If I ever have some sort of terminal illness, and stop it. We're allowed to talk about it. It's not a fluke thing that happens to people. I think I would spend my final days with my eyes closed, jamming out to my memories. I think that's what I would do. Maybe work through real time. Maybe I would say today, I'm going to take 1993. And I would have like a few other people like clue me in on what was going on. And I'd be like, man, 1993. I'm just going to jam out to 1993 and listen to the music of 1993. And I think that's what I would do. I think I would lay, because I think I could probably lay with my eyes closed and reminisce as a way of life. If I wanted to, I could do it for hours. I could do it for friggin' hours. And if I kept going, it would be like wiping the steam off a window. And just get more and, and, you know, have you ever had this experience? Have you ever gone back into your memory and seen something you didn't remember for years? Something, something new to the memory that reminded you of something in real life? You know, I thought that had dropped off forever. And you're at your grandmother's house again and you can see the stained glass. But you didn't every other time you walked through. But today the memory just went. Poof. And then sometimes you say to yourself. We better get out of this memory because by experiencing the memory, we're leaving, we're leaving fingerprints on it and I want to come back again. So you don't touch anything in the memory. You move very gingerly through it, look at it for a minute and say, we don't want to sully it. Oh, what's the relevant quote? And also give me also one irrelevant quote from Dr. Seuss. So, you, so I'll, sometimes I'll be like, ooh, this is a good one. I'd be like, I better get out without touching any. Like literally almost in my mind touching anything because I want to come back. And you don't want it. By touching it, you change it. And you don't want to. Sometimes I think to myself that I'm the only person who's ever remembered something. And the people in my memories, well, they have to keep the place open. And they can't wait for me to forget that memory so they can move on. 
as if they were actors or something, you know? Like, what if you had a memory about a girl and it was in a diner? And the people working at the diner who were in your memories, they can leave as soon as you forget. But they can't leave as long as you still keep coming back to the diner. And the lights are buzzing and the coffee's cold, but it's, they just want you to go. But damn it, you just keep showing up. And she's sitting there across from you at the table, now all pixelated, you know, all changed up. You're trying to draw as much as you can draw, but you're failing at it. And the waitresses are chewing their stale gum, looking at the clock, buzz, doosh. And you're still talking to her, talking to her. Why couldn't you, why couldn't you this? Why couldn't you that? And they just can't, they got other things to do. They got other people's memories to act in. Anyway, I can say whatever I want to say. What you writing lately? Uh, little pieces, little pieces of things. Like it always starts with little pieces. So I get lucky from time to time, but for the most part, it's me taking little colors and going, does that work? Does that work? I'm getting there. It always happens this way. I'll be coming to Japan soon. Apple Watch. I like it. I wish it wasn't a watch. I wish it was a bracelet so I can wear it with a watch. It shouldn't be a watch. It should be a bracelet. Then you can have your watch and a bracelet. Said that already, doubling the explanation. Any plans for Australia? Well, let's make this useful in one way or another. Yes. We are now using the word Australia in sentences when it comes to touring. Do I hear certain notes in a color? No, but I hear certain colors in a note. Okay, well, listen. The reason we stay on is because there's no good way to get off. Oh, is that the, the you, you were the new, there's no more love who was you were the new? Well, that's true. I fear that there's no other person that's as me as me, which is why I'll be Uncle John forever. And look, it'll be great. The nieces and the nephews will get off the little motorboat and Uncle John's island and a drone will come and they'll go cool and I'll be won't be far behind the drone there's a little bit of war games coming in by the way hey games you know Uncle John with the new technology he's got a laser disc player and a water bed and a car phone we got to play with Uncle John's car phone just hope there's an Uncle John's wife that would be nice all right When you remember something new in a memory, it's because your mom told you about it. That's definitely not Dr. Seuss. That's definitely... <laughs> I don't believe Dr. Seuss ever had a quote with the phrase, your mom, in it. And I'm no academic scholar, but... Do you have a guitar there? I'd love to hear I do, but I'm just not in the mood to pick it up. And I don't know if you can see this, but my calluses are killing me because I got back to playing my stuff. Yeah, you can kind of see it. A lot of bending in my songs. Battery update, it's gotta be like 12%. It's gotta be like 12%. ID on the crew neck, indigo camping trailer. Beautiful stuff. Um, oh, that's funny, right? That Princess Bride musical. I got asked to do that years ago and it was a great idea. Didn't think I could pull it off. The quote is about how you don't recognize the weight of a moment until it becomes memory. I know. At least that makes me feel like I'm not alone in it. At least it makes me feel like I'm not alone. But yeah. The Power of Then. That would be my book. The Power of Then. I was in the movie Get Hard. There was a, a line in Get Hard that never made it in. Will Ferrell said, and I love beelines. Like I'm a fan of alt, like alternate takes. I never think the joke everyone agrees on is as funny as the B joke. I just don't. It's like the way, the way my mind works. And I'm like an asshole to Will Ferrell in this movie at the very beginning, or at least in the way we, we shot it. And he got thrown this line. And when he said it, it was so funny. He said, do meet your heroes. And 
I just thought it was one of the funnier things I'd ever heard. Like, like he's getting, he, he, gets, he gets me, like I'm playing myself as a wedding gift of playing songs. And I'm kind of an asshole to him. And he just looks and he goes, do meet your heroes. Shit makes me laugh. I'm the guy laughing in the theater when people aren't laughing. And then I'm the guy just like eating popcorn when, on all the big jokes people like. I don't care about the big jokes. I care about the ones. I care about the jokes people say on, talk, uh, on like uh, Today Show and stuff that make the cameramen laugh. Like Robin Williams, bless his heart, used to, well, I guess they say, what do they say? What do they say when someone is like, but bless his heart, rest his soul is what they say. Um, would make the cameramen laugh. And the sound of three people laughing off camera is so much more funny than the sound of a crowd of people laughing. All right, listen, listen. I want you to have a great week. I want you to enjoy yourself. Don't get lost in the sauce of Instagram. Understand that there's a point of view on Twitter that expresses every angle of a situation and that the ones you're being shown fit a narrative because that narrative makes money for people. So just remember, you can reach your hand into this river pull out a fish of any color, of any size. That's what makes the river interesting. Some people only pick out the fish they want to show you because they know that statistically certain fish get bought. So just remember, sometimes your emotions are getting toyed with. And don't let that happen to the best of your ability. I love you very much. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time when we all combat the Sunday sads together. John Mayer. CBS News, Nicaragua.